Uh, today is Wednesday, February 24th, meeting of the Berlin Personnel Committee. As a preliminary matter, please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you. Take care not to screen share your computer. Uh, anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. This is Claire Pond, Chair of the Personnel Committee. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me prior to me calling the meeting to order. Uh, members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Sue Terrian. I'm here. Am I unmuted? No, you're, yes, you're unmuted. <laughs> yep, you're okay. Right. Um, <clears throat> I don't see anything from Tom, right? Tom's trying. Tom's trying to get on right now. Okay. I'll watch okay. for him. Um, the staff, Margaret Nardowitz. Margaret's here. Okay. And then we have as guests tonight the um, select board, and that would be Scott Hawkins. Yep, I'm here. Christine Keefe. Here. And Peg Stone. Howdy. Howdy. <laughs> Okay, um, with a quorum of the board present, I call this meeting to order at 6.33 p.m. The first order of business on our agenda is the previous meeting minutes, which were from February 10th. Um, I sent those out prior to the meeting. What do you say on those? I make a motion to accept them as written. So motions made, and I will second that where Tom's not here. So all those in favor, that would be aye. Sue, aye. And Claire, aye. All right, did we, did we have any PAFs, Margaret? No PAFs for tonight. No PAFs, okay. Position reviews and advertising. You had sent out something ahead of time tonight, uh, Margaret, about in case if we're unable to um, find proper, appropriate um, uh, talent, if you will, from the folks that applied for the uh, labor driver position that we posted, um, there is a new advertisement that you'd like to post. It's in draft form right now. Um, yep. We do have interviews that we're trying to schedule for next Tuesday, but it's a small pool of applicants that have yep. the requisite licenses. So this, this would advertise for a driver laborer only. Um, there's a lot of confusion with our old job descriptions right. as to what job is what. Um, I think actually, I think Sandy's draft job description on driver laborer is more applicable to yep. what we'd be looking for. Okay, so. and I, I did take a look at that. That looked good. Okay. Can I just interrupt for a minute? Can somebody with the ability send Tom the link? I can't do it with just my one. Right, let me, I'll do it on my other computer. Yeah, I can't leave. Okay, so yeah, so the job ad is a draft ad in the event that we cannot select two candidates that could fill the higher level position. Okay. So that I thought the ad looked really good um, based on the functions uh, in, in the essential functions that Sandy had listed in the new job description. And I thought that that matched up well with what the ad said. I agree, I liked it. And I also do agree with the fact that if we have to have someone trained to get them to commit. Yep. To the years like we had talked about. Right. I do yep. think that should be part of all the job descriptions when we do training. I personally, um, you know, we can talk about it um, when we get closer, when we get closer to the policies, but, um, and if they do obtain licenses on a prorated basis um, and reimbursing the town for any costs that the town paid for them to obtain those licenses, Mm -hmm. I, I, I think I'd like to see it um, personally, um, instead of five years, a lower amount of years than five years. 
five years is a, is a long time. So when we go over that policy and when we go over that um, letter, can we talk about um, it being a lower amount of years, say two years? Oh, absolutely. Or we a year have one that's we have one right now that's based on five years, but we can absolutely adjust it. Yes. So okay. I'll I'll uh, send you that. Okay, great. All right. So based on the draft of the uh, advertisement for the uh, labor, I'm sorry, uh, driver laborer, um, I'd like to make a motion that we approve that in case they need to post that. I will second that. Okay. Any discussion? I just want to I just want to clarify that Dave and I have talked about this, the potential for this. So um, Great. We, we have. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. Um, if there's no other discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Claire? So aye. Okay. There's Tom. Great. Okay. There he is. Okay. Uh, let's see anything else here. So I think we're good in terms of um, the next piece on, on the agenda was the HR um, consultant update. So I think we have Sandy Stepanski here that can start on her, her presentation of the, uh, the draft policies for us. Um, thank you very much, Claire. Uh, members of the personnel committee, uh, select board and Margaret, thank you very much for your time. Um, I sent you the draft of the um, personnel policies. Uh, of course, they're very comprehensive, so it would take a long time to go through it page by page, but I would like to give you an overview. Um, we all know that your current policies are very outdated and, uh, and absolute, you know, obsolete, so we cannot really um, use them for the most part. So it involved um, what I thought was going to be a quick update when I started looking at them, I thought, I think we have to just put that aside and rewrite them from scratch. And that probably caused some delay on our part, but um, there was no way that I could edit this, you know. Um, so uh, we have some nice policies for you. One of the things I would like to point out, particularly to the select board, the very first page is an introduction to the uh, policies. And I'm I'm assuming that um, and I'm encouraging you once these are all completed and final that every employee will get a copy and they'll sign off on them and so forth. But um, the first page is more of sort of like a, a mission statement for the select board. I have here an example that I put for you. I don't mean to put words into your mouth, mouth or anything, but you might want to think about as a board, you know, how you might want to um, change this. Um, you may like this, if, if the way that it's written. I actually um, did this first page for another town and I have it uh, as a sample for you. It's, it's not bad, but there might be some other things that you want to add and kind of personalize it um, as you welcome the employees uh, to the town. Um, excuse me, Sandy, just for a moment, if you don't mind, do you want to share that um, those pages so that um, as you're going over them that uh, that they'd be up on the screen? Um, does everybody have, okay, does everybody have a copy of them or no? I'm just putting my Word document up. As oh, you're, I, yeah, I have a Word document can, up on my other screen. I can, I can do that. If you could just bear with me for a minute, I'll have to Sure. If if it's if it's a little too much, no, that's no problem. I can do it. Um, I suppose here is what. Oh. So how do that's I share? Are you giving me permission to? Yeah, I think you have permission to share. So down the bottom, Sandy, it should say share screen. Do you have a green button at the bottom of your laptop there? Bottom yeah. of your screen. Okay. So. So you. Bottom of the Zoom uh, window, there should be a green share screen button. Yep. And then from that, you could select what you're sharing and you can share just the, the word the you could just share the screen as Microsoft Word as opposed to everything. I needed to go on my uh, 
internet to, to um, mm. so let me just see. Um, I'm not, for some reason, I'm okay. not. Uh, let me, I can pull them up, I think. Uh, just uh, give me one minute. Yeah. I don't know why I can't. I'd but I'm constantly scrolling up and back. So if I do this, well, I don't, yeah, I, I'd have to go into the web portal. Um, yeah. Let me see here. Um, can you pull them up, Margaret? Yes. I can share. Just, um, yep, I got it. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Well, All right. I, oh, perfect. Thank you, Margaret. Right. Yeah, I, I made it a lot easier because I, I would have had to go on the web portal and everything. So that's good. I, I think it's I, me sharing. Oh, that's fine. Scott, you've got it up. Okay, Scott's yeah. got it up. Okay. Oh, I, I, I will just I will just have to like seriously hold my hands back and not be scrolling back and forth. As, so so <laughs> now now that you have it up, Margaret, can you make me the presenter? Oh, the Scott has it up. Scott, could you make Sandy the presenter? I don't know. <laughs> So I can go through the pages. I don't, I don't know if I could do that without. Sandy? Okay. Yep. Sandy, I think you now have mouse and keyboard control over my computer. Oh, okay. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. Terrific. That way I can just scroll up and down. I won't go mm -hmm. on your computer. I just want to scroll. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's um, fine. <laughs> yeah, I know with go to meeting you can do that. So I just assume you can do it with Zoom. So yep. this is this is something that we actually had developed for another town. And I, I just have it as a good example. And it talks about the town of Berlin and that, you know, again, emphasizing to the employees that they are town employees when they need to honor and respect the citizens and um, you know, the goodwill and, and that sort of thing. And so you can edit this any way that you like you know, to make it more personalized. Um, you know, this is just an example of what that can be. It can be one page, it can be two pages. So getting into the policies um, themselves, I'd like to, um, now this is um, going into the policy section. I'd just like to mention a few things. Um, a lot of the laws have changed in the last decade. Um, so you have um, the Pregnancy Act and we have new social media um, concerns. Um, you know, anti-discrimination now is, you know, very big, and we have a, a new uh, policy on that. Um, you know, th there are um, a, a lot, a lot, and I'll go over them. They're all, they're all attached. There's a lot of policies that you don't have. Um, so a lot has changed um, in HR. Uh, I would recommend that you stay away from any kind of dress code. <laughs> I think that um, is really passe and except to say that people should just dress appropriately, you know, for, for the office or, or the work environment in which they work, you know, because it's different working in a DPW department or working in an office, but we don't have to get so detailed like you can't wear leather pants and things like that, you know, so you want to stay away from that kind of language and just have more broad. A lot of people don't even have, you know, the dress code anymore. Um, so the way that this is set up, I'm assuming you have a personnel bylaw. Do you, do you have that? Yes. Yeah. So the personnel bylaw would basically promulgate this or the select board, right? One or the other would promulgate these uh, policies and that you would just want to double check with your town, with your um, labor council as to what would be the best avenue to pro promulgate these policies. And I'm assuming it would be your bylaw, but it can also be the select board uh, too. So if, Sandy, if I could real quick, I don't know, I, I know we've been going through this a long time, but um, you may recall that we do have personnel bylaws and one of our one of our many issues with our policies and bylaws is that they um, they don't match up. So and our and our bylaws are very extensive, um, where our policies say the same thing. So I think we have some issues where our, our bylaws we need to we need to work on our bylaws so that they do promulgate the the policies. Right now they're almost standalone. Yeah, I mean, I, it wasn't um, within our scope to write a bylaw, but what I could do for you is I could give you some samples of more modern personnel bylaws that are just, usually they're just a couple of pages long and they, 
you don't want to have all the details that you have in your policy. You don't want that in your bylaw because anytime you make a change, then you got to go to right. state. So you yeah. don't. So I can give you, Margaret. I can give you some samples, and I, you know, and then you can show your your labor council, and they probably can um, work on updating that for you. Um, but the um, so the so anyway, getting back to the. Uh, so the first section is the administration, which talks about the purpose and the authority the, um, and, and all of that. Um, there's a section on recruitment and selection. And it's important here, you know, we have now the ADA and, you know, to make sure that there's a statement about uh, disability discrimination and um, reasonable accommodations. And um, we have the Corey and the Sori, which, you know, in your policies before, I don't think you addressed. And, you know, there's a lot in here that were not addressed in your old policies. Um, compensation and classification and how a position is reclassified and, um, and the pay periods and how it ties into uh, payroll. Um, talks about the Fair Labor Standards Act. Uh, flex time is so important now, particular in this, particularly in this environment. Um, so there's some language on that and longevity, um, the employee uh, benefits, and um, and I'm I'm going to have to make some corrections on the employee benefits because there was some things that you don't do that I need to uh, correct. So um, and I, I've been in touch with Margaret on, on that, and she gave me some uh, updates. Uh, and then your uh, your leave benefits. Um, we want to you know as we're doing this, we want to put things that are actual. There's a lot of things that, um, that the Department of Labor and, um, you know, the state government is talking about and, um, but we don't want to put in here things that, that policies that government agencies are thinking about, but are not actual law yet. So we don't want, you know, to do that until it becomes um, official. Uh, so we want to make sure that the policies reflect what it is uh, today. So if there's an added holiday um, that people are talking about, but it hasn't been officially um, done, you know, then, then you, know, you, you don't want to include that in here. Then there's personal leave, um, small necessities leave act. Uh, the sick leave policies have changed. Um, uh, and of course, if, Family Medical Leave Act, we have an updated version of, uh, of that. And I gave um, Margaret an even more updated one than the one that's in here. So I'll be making that change. Uh, parental Leave, uh, the Pregnant Workers Fairness Act, which includes lactation and lactation accommodations, um, employee leave for victims and families of members of abuse and uh, bereavement. Um, we also wanted to make the policies more gender neutral. And um, so wherever possible, um, we did not, instead of saying he or she, we use they or their, you know, try to be more. So, um, and when we talk about uh, male, female, non-binary, you know, to make sure that we are not discriminating against any group. Um, so that is very uh, important today uh, in the environment that, that we are in. Um, you know, ethics, nepotism, uh, you know, all of these, you know, workplace policies. Um, and um, so these are all pretty, the computer technology, the internet and the social media. We wrote a very uh, extensive piece on um, the social networking and the social media because um, we're in a different environment today than we were even just a couple of years ago. Um, so, and it's not just anymore just using town computers, but even when employees are using their own personal computers and they're saying or they're defaming or doing inappropriate things, they must still be held accountable. You know, so um, you, you, it's not anymore just limited to um, a town computer. You know, if somebody's doing something on their own personal internet and and they're harassing somebody, for example, online, you know, they have to be held accountable for that. So it's a very, the, the social media um, piece gets into 
the guidelines, um, you know, employee use of social media for work purposes. You know, they need to know and follow the rules and be respectful, be honest and accurate, um, post only appropriate and respectful content, um, you know, using it at, at, at work. Um, there are things in here about, you know, how retaliation is prohibited, um, you know, media contacts, um, you know, and, and just the illegal content, you know, conduct that is uh, prohibitive, security and monitoring of social media. Um, you know, in the environment that we are in today, it's just, it's very important that you have a good social media because there's a lot of bad things that are being said and done. So um, it's good to have that updated. Um, we also, another big piece was the um, harassment, sexual harassment and or discrimination uh, so an anti, it's sort of an anti-discrimination altogether, all in one uh, policy that encompasses, um, you know, uh, any kind of unlawful um, harassment, and it's it's beyond sexual harassment. So it's it's um, it's called anti-harassment and discrimination policy, and it does follow the guidelines of the state um, and. Uh, you know, so so we um, and and th in this too, it also there's a section that talks about, um, you know, online um, harassment. You know, and it has the investigation, and it has the form. You know, I don't know if you had forms in here, but the employees have to, you know, sign uh, a form that they have received a copy of this, and also know where they would make complaints and so forth. So in the final report and the final ones, we want to make sure that all those forms are in here. So employees, um, there's certain policies, not only do they sign off on the entire policies, but there are certain policies like the anti-harassment that they would do, you would do yearly and have training. Um, and I know it's been hard for people because of COVID to have the necessary training, but you do want to have that anti-discrimination um, training is so important. I don't know if, if you're a, a part of Maya. Are you a part of Maya? Yeah, I, guess that, I bet that they offer a lot of this kind of training and it might be free, I don't know. I don't wanna speak for them, but I know they offer a lot of training. Do you know, Margaret? They do. And um, so if, uh, employees, we could actually do a group training with them. And we also use KP Law um, as our town council, and they could also do the training uh, for us as a group. Yeah, I would strongly recommend this. This is very, very serious stuff, and there's a lot of case law. So I would recommend strongly for that kind of training that you either have your insurance company like Maya, or you have an attorney, you know, do it. Um, so be, ca be careful of that. And I think you guys are on the right track. Um, so um dispute discipline and by the way anything in here you know if there's something in the union contract that's different the union contract would of course trump this unless of course um unless of course it's something that's a federal law you know obviously that mm -hmm. that would apply to everybody you know or a state law so but if there's something specific in a union contract about leave you know like leave days or things like that of course that would be, you know, the guidance you would go through is your um, your uh, union contract. Um, so it has, um, you do not have retiree health benefits and I apologize, that's not part of your policy. Um, there's things like court attendance, fraud, whistleblower protection, uh, drug-free workplace, uh, discrimination, non-harassment prevention policy, um, access control policy. Um, so th there is a lot here. I'm going to scoot to the, um, and everything is standardized in the same format. So it's consistent, you know, how the bulleting and the numbering and the introduction statements and so forth. Um, but I want to just scoot to the back because there's some, uh, there's a lot of good um, information back here. Um, and I also sent you some COVID policies and I have to discuss with Margaret how, uh, and, and all of you too, how you want to handle those 
if you want to handle them um if you want to handle them as a separate set or if you want to include them because there's um there's some you know like remote work is really good i, I don't know you might want to include that in here um also things about you know um you know somebody if they're sick or diseased or you know um you know, what's the protocol back in the workplace with regard to um, cleanliness and that sort of thing. Um, so I, I don't know. I mean, I gave you a lot of COVID policies and you may want to um, consider, I don't know, Margaret, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, Sandy, I only, I've only shared the general policies with um, personnel and the select board so far, <laughs> since okay. this was 99 pages, <laughs> but oh, you know, I actually, and I'll share them, I'll share them with the, the personnel um, committee and the board. Um, my thought um, right off the top of my head would be to add all the COVID policies as a separate appendix. Yeah. Uh, or, or or somehow keep them separate so that we can at least um when this pandemic is over at some point um we could at least uh pull those out and be able to focus on the standard policies more so than than the covid policies but we'd still have them to refer to that's just my initial so they would be a, um, an append an appendix separate, yeah. it's either a separate that's appendix a or a separate covid manual i separate, that's yeah. covid manual yeah I'll leave um, that to the personnel committee. The, the other thing I'd like to say is there might be some things in there. You can have it separate for now, but there might be some things in there that eventually you'll want to transfer over here because there might be some standards that that don't change. I don't know, but but we can have a separate uh, COVID manual for sure with those uh, policies. Um, you know, obviously when we're done with writing these policies and also the COVID uh, manual, we would strongly encourage you then to have your labor council just review them. Um, and that, that we always recommend that in every town that we work in, um, they can look at something quickly and they can see a word or a phrase or something that they will know because of case law. And they might say, oh, you don't want to say that anymore. So. It's just a double check and by having it in this format, it will be a lot easier for them to just review it and comment than for them to, you know, write everything from from scratch and um, and and a lot of the um, uh, The guidance that we get is um, When we write them is, is from legal sources anyway, um, and I bet um, some of the legal sources we have are the same sources that they use. Mm -hmm. It's just that they're attorneys, so they, they know the law a little bit better. We're not attorneys, so I just wanted to make that uh, very clear. But um, this will be a nice, so when we give it to the town, it will be like a final draft with the provision that your labor council, does that sound right to you, um, Margaret? Um, yes, and of course, you know, everything is subject to personnel committee's recommendation and the board's approval. Um, my, my question on the COVID policies is, uh, Sandy, did you put those up in the portal? Yes. That, so the personnel committee could access them? Okay. They're, yeah, they're in there. They're all okay. in there. They're all okay. in the portal. Um, and, um, you know, and there might be some policies that you want to have that, um, you know, that your attorney might say, oh, but you don't really need that because of the law, but you may still want to have it as a best practice kind of thing. So, um, you know, I don't, you know, so like posting internally, you know, certain jobs and things, you know, there's a lot of, there's a, it's sort of a gray area. So, um, you know, so you might want to just, um, you know, think about that. There might be some things that when the attorney reviews it says, well, you don't really need this, you don't really need that, but you might still want it, you know, so don't feel um, you know, that that you can't have something in here just because there's no law that, that says that you have to have it. Um, so, you know, cause you want, um, and then and then this is all written kind of in a user-friendly, um, you know, I don't know if you've seen like the rules and regulations in a lot of towns, how they have, and they're very, difficult to understand and very legalistic. And 
this was written in a way that the you know layman could understand it and so you know the employees could get a copy of it and they could read it and it would be easy for them to understand you know you don't want it to be so confusing that they'll have a hard time understanding it i like to call it a procedures and you know policies and procedures manual rather than a handbook you know i i don't like the term handbook um and a handbook is sort of a different thing. A handbook is sort of be like a summary of the key elements of your official policy. So I would stick with policies and procedures. Um, and if you have policies and procedures, you don't really need a handbook, you know, to be honest with you. This is what everybody should have. Um, so it's a policy manual. So um, the there's a big section in here on um, technology and uh, you know copyright and, and email and public records and, and all of that. Um, and you know one section in particular talks about how employees should have no expectation of privacy in any use of the town's information technology. So you know things like that. I think that's where you really was lacking here. You didn't have a good um, technology. Was there anything in here on technology, Margaret? I don't. I don't really. No. Think, no, there was nothing. I think. I think it would have referred to like Wang computers. Yeah. Oh, no. Okay. It was. Anybody remember those? <laughs> oh yes, I and I remember the ones even before that, like NDI and all that. So I mean, <laughs> so so they so um so there's a big technology piece in here. I hope it's not over the top, but I know that you'll all review it. It was Margaret and she can um, give me advice if she thinks, you know, but I put, I, you know, there's plenty in here. It's better to have too much and then you can take some out than not to have um, enough information. Um, but, you know, it clearly says that the town may monitor employee use of, of uh, technology, but not limited to computer equipment, email, internet, websites, all files downloaded, you know, by the employees and and, and so forth. Um, so they shouldn't consider that any communication transmission, website viewed, and any email um, to be private or confidential. Um, and so, and, and it goes into that in quite a bit of detail. Um, Just for the record, at, at my and, office, the technology policy also includes that anything you write using. Uh, Corporate resources belong to the corporation and can be copyrighted by the corporation. Anything when I do my new when I do my new staff orientation, I say if you write the next Harry Potter novel by sending home an email every day using your work email, the agency owns it all and we can actually copyright it. Oh wow, that's pretty amazing. Yeah, I guess like in some of these big companies too, like <laughs> if you're an engineer and you come up with a patent while you're working for a GE. GE mm -hmm. owns the patent, right? Not not the employee. So it's kind of the same, you know, thought process. Right. And it's not stopped us over the years for me to give written permission that you can use a non-exclusive copy of something that you helped develop while you were at the agency. I mean, but just to start off with, if you've if you've done it on work time using work resources, it belongs to work. Right, exactly. And and and, and you have to um, and then the, the whole access to and the security of the technology is important. And, um, you know, so there's a lot in here about uh, that as well. Um, you know, how to secure their pass, you know, gets into securing the passwords and so forth. So the point is, there's a big section in here on um, technology equipment. Um, and I, ha I have to, you know, disclose to you that a lot of this section I actually worked on with another town um, for them and I, I'm using it as as a model for other communities and they're okay with that. I mean it's not a not a problem. But um, you know if it's really good we can we can use it. Um, so that that was um, in here um, teleworking and remote access you know gets into that and of course we all know about that today. Um, and then you know, there's an acknowledgement of, of the policies that everybody has to sign at the end. Um, 
So, so there is uh, a lot in here and you're right, Margaret. I didn't even realize it was 99 pages <laughs> until you mentioned that is a lot. <laughs> so what were your old, your old ones were what? Um, 40, okay. So we more than doubled them, right? Now looking at your old ones, you know, what you want to, um, I don't know if there's anything in your old policies that you want that, that um, you want to still keep. Um, well, Sandy, I think that the areas that you highlighted um, in the draft policies um, that you refer to the town uh, to establish policy on, I think that the board or oh, the personnel committee and the board would want to um, review the existing policies to see if they want to retain those things. So, for example, Scott had been asking about vacation accruals. Um, and so building something like that in, you know, so yes. basics like that, but everything around the vacation accruals, um, that's one of the areas that I flagged. I, it's, it's very co confusing in the current uh, personnel policies and things like uh, some of the paragraphs just simply need to be changed and updated and struck. Are you in your, on yours or in mine? Oh, on ours. <laughs> on yours, yes, yes. And you sent me, you sent me um, the updated language and I know you sent that to me before and I apologize, I couldn't find that. Um, That's okay. And, you know, and also, um, you know, if you have a performance form, we should probably attach it uh, to this for people to see what it looks like. Um, but if there's any section in your old policies that we did not cover in the new ones, but I think we cover just about everything, um, let me know and we'll, we'll include it. Um, but I, I think we covered just about everything and more. Um, you know, we've got training and we're gonna add the vacation, the sick, the sick leave, military, bereavement, um, uh, insurance, insurances. Okay. Um, Safety, we have, yeah, I mean. I'm, I'm thankful for the little things. I'm thankful for the little things like referring to, um, you know, referring to the actual laws instead of spelling things out and um, assuming that the laws have not been updated. So uh, right. COBRA and HIPAA and FMLA and you yes. name it. <laughs> oh yeah, OSHA, OSHA is another thing. You don't have anything oh, about OSHA in here. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so there, these have been, um, updated um, in, with regard to that. And um, I think, you know, how we have the best way to move forward, and I know it's a lot of reading, um, but uh, if everybody could just read it and comment on it, and then we'll make the edits and put it in final. I really do want your input. Um, is that, I hope that's not too much to, you know. So, a question and a question for personnel um, in particular. So we all have our current personnel policies and procedures. Claire showed, Claire showed hers and mine are loaded with flags. Um, so should we all, uh, is this, should this be like a first step that we all look at the relevant sections that we've flagged um, and then go over those things where we've had areas of concern? I'm just, I'm just curious to know how other towns have coordinated the review. I mean, this is a lot to review. Um, any any recommendations on that? Okay, so um, maybe what you could do is um, how, how many of you are on the uh, personnel committee? Is it five or three? Three. Three. Okay, so maybe you could, um, you know, break it up into sections between the three of you, and uh, and and maybe even Margaret. I don't know if you have time, Margaret. Margaret is so. Good. I know. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe you could like break it up in three or four pieces, and you each have a section that you review, and then um, and what people usually do for us is they'll just redline it or make a note or make a comment on okay. the because it's in Word, and just make a note, and then and then we'll make uh, the the correction. Um, don't feel like you have to write like a whole paragraph or something, you can just say like, oh, could you please add this? Or could you please look at that? You know, Okay. I don't expect you to do the writing. We're gonna do the writing. Just bring to our attention. 
it could be like a, a, a couple of words. You just say, Sandy, look at this on page blah, blah, blah. Could you double check that? You know what I mean? It could, something, I do not expect you to be doing the writing. So it's just comment and advisory from your end. Comment and advisory. And, and then we'll do the more digging and, um, and then finalize it for you. Um, and that would probably be the best way to go and, and just split it up, you know, say, well, I'll do the first three chapters or, you know, whatever. And, um, but, you know, it, it, a lot of it, I think, um, you know, it, it's, it's good, it's, it's current. Um, so I, mm -hmm. I think that, um, I, I don't know that there's, I, I mean, unless there's something seriously missing in the old policies that's not in the new, you know, Margaret, I don't, I, don't, mm -hmm. I almost feel like we should just be thrown out. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm sorry, you know. I mean, what year were these written? 2011 or tw they're at least 10 years. I think they're 10 years old now, so. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, unless there's something, you know, very- well, There were some sections, there were some sections in yellow that were sort of policy questions mm -hmm. more than they were wording questions, weren't there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The new ones. And with with a with a majority of the select board, the town administrator, and a majority of personnel, maybe we should look at some of those policy things just to see if the group of us, or at least which ones we are in agreement with, and which ones we're not on, so that we can sort of hash out and spend more time working on at some point those that we might have some disagreements with. That's a good point. Those yellow, those yellow highlighted sections where Sandy recommends that the town look at policy. Sorry about that. Oops, I don't know what's going on here. Not... Right, I'm scrolling to find. Oh, the you are. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, I thought I did something. <laughs> okay. No, nope, no, nope, sorry. That's me. Wait, I took so back you control. You have control now. Okay, good. Um, I think you could jump back to control at any moment. I think we both have control over this particular window yep, in my that's laptop. Okay. So. If I knew exactly where it was, I probably would have jumped to it as opposed to scrolling to find where yellow sections are. There's, There's one. one. There's one. Yeah, yes. so I don't know what your policy is, you know, for this, for the meals. Maybe we want to just take it out. I don't know. Well, I don't even know if we have anything in the policies mm, and no, not for on this. that. I don't mm. think we do. And, and I like this as a policy, as someone who's lived both under a policy do. of a flat dollar amount and a policy of I have to provide receipts, is that, you know, sometimes receipts for McDonald's at the airport or something else, or if I feel like having an expensive dinner, how I like say, look, I went out to an expensive place and I'm fine with you only reimbursing me for some of it. Mm -hmm. um, I think having the I policy absolutely. of a flat dollar amount works, whether or not this yeah. is the right dollar amount we can debate. Yeah. Right talking about the dollar amount is is reasonable but this putting something in like this absolutely is is necessary because in normal times you know we might be gone to whatever uh you know a accounting school or a you know mma conference where we we do something like this i we we need the guidelines so. yeah yeah then no that's great yeah that's why a lot of towns have this i i I've seen this in a lot of communities and their policies. Um, okay, yeah, if you could like, yeah, I think the yellow sections in particular, if you could let me know if you agree, disagree, or what needs to be changed. I know I got to change um, the, uh, the, the uh, accrual vacation, accrual and all that. that um, but there's something in here about, um, I'm just going to say, I think I must be a because I, I never spend $30 on dinner. <laughs> That's a good time. Of right. <laughs> medical leave. Yeah, there are a few um, in here that are, um, and of course, I'm going to fix all the table of contents and make all the numbers, everything match up. And um, that at the end, there's no point in doing it now. Um, but and there might be some sections in here that you say, you know what, we don't need that. Let's take it out. Okay. Yeah. Right. So gonna, do we do um, longevity pay for do we do longevity pay now for non-union employees? No. I, no. Because I 
I think that section can go. That section, the um, I think the um, longevity retiree health insurance is another section that we don't yeah. have. So we so there are some sections that we just don't have. Right. So what are some thoughts from everyone on how you'd like to tackle this? Um, one of my thoughts was, I kind of want to, personally, I want to read through and then compare to the policies and see um, there's a lot more in this policy manual, of course, than our policies and procedures that we have now. But one of the things I want to be clear on are definitions. And I think some of that is important, especially when we come to um, the definitions of things like benefit eligible, eligible employee, continuous, mm -hmm. service, mm -hmm. continuous service, effective service date, as some of these oh, things yeah. have come to personnel where folks, um, an employee has come to personnel committee and said that, um, Although they have been a per diem employee for, you know, 10 years, they'd like their service time to start 10 years ago so that they would get the higher level. And we've had to really dig in deep to the definitions to just make sure we're all clear on uh, where we all stand. So I would like to take a close look at those. But any other suggestions from folks on how we might want to do this? Does everybody want to do it um, individually? Do people want to do it as a group or and we can um, get back together or we we get our information to Margaret to send to Sandy? What are your thoughts? Any thoughts from Sue, Tom? Scott? I think right. Um, I agree with Scott that we need to go through all those um, yellow policies as a group personnel and board of selectmen because they are policies. And I think the three of us on personnel, we all have those old personnel files with 5 million stickers in them. Yeah. We just have the time now to go through all the little stickers to make sure those things that either people have questioned us about or we have questioned, now we can make sure that's straightened out. Yep or at least it's addressed. So we all feel better about it. And then I think at the next personnel meeting, we talk about what we found. Okay. Defining a work day is going to be critical because we have, you know, we have employees who work, you know, varied um, work weeks and, and our, the current policies are, are awful. They just don't sufficiently that didn't. address it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think we did, um, you know, explain that, you know, at will, full time, part time, part time eligible for benefits, temporary, exempt, non exempt, eligibility for insurance. I think we, and the new ones, we, we talk about that. Yeah. I think we should just all go through it and then wait till the next meeting so we all have a chance because I, I just got it today. <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm, I know it's, a, it's a lot to read and absorb, and I apologize. Um, well, no, that's no, no that that's was good. on me. I, I accidentally left out Sue on the distribution list, so. <laughs> oh. I wish I could say I was. And I didn't you know, notice that. either. So. <laughs> what, um, what I would, um, you know, recommend is um, get the big things done first. You know, so we can just clean that up. If there's anything major that cannot be in here, or that you don't have, or that needs to be fixed right away, let's let's do that. And then, and then the little things. There might be little things, um, you know, that might take a little bit longer. I don't know. Um, like I don't know. Do you have a cafeteria plan? We. Uh, we are beginning to discuss a cafeteria plan. It would be completely voluntary uh, for the employees. So um, hopefully that's something that could be implemented that would be at no cost to the town, uh, but available to employees. So we're talking about it. Okay. So I shouldn't say we are. IAC, IAC started talking about it at their last meeting. 
Yeah, so it, it, they are nice. I mean, if it is something, a direction that you're going in, you might as well just include it in. This might be a time to work on that policy. Um, and, um, you know, the there are other, I'm sure, yellow um, sections that I had in here. Um, so the creditable service for prior experience, you know, that's something. Yep. You know, personal leave. I don't know what you give if you give three days or one day or two. No. One. No question. Actually, for Margaret, does the um, I'm very involved right now at uh, my employer with the mass paid family leave. And um, do do the towns um, have the mass paid family leave? Andy, is that an, is that elective for municipalities? That's the paid family leave. That was a, that's elective, so the town can proactively opt in. And I know our town has not. Okay, I don't, think, I don't think too many towns have. Mm -mm. It's it's costly, so I don't. Oh my word! Yeah, I don't think so. I think they kind of didn't want to do it. So, so that's different than what we have, right? So. The, what do we have in here? The, what What are you calling again? The paid family leave. The mass, the mass pa Massachusetts paid family medical leave. That's a new law in the state for yeah. all employers with at least fifty employees. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one that nobody liked. Nobody's doing that. Yeah. So yeah, no, a town meeting, and most I don't know of any community that's adopted it. Do you want? No, 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 I don't. Oh, lucky you. No, they. I I don't see why they. They would choose to I, right no. we didn't have a choice in my employer so <laughs> my, my employer didn't have a choice either well yeah. municip the law applies differently to municipalities and that's why municipalities have stayed back good good okay well that's one good thing that's great so given that feedback um, are we all okay kind of going through these things on our own and then coming back to we will be having um, our next personnel committee meeting. Um, let me see. Sorry. It is um, March 10th. Yep, March 10th. And then another one on March 24th. So um, we will come back with some thoughts and, and go over that. And if anybody would like to join us at that time, that would be fine and they'd be most welcome. If we wanted to get in, dig a little deeper. March, uh, so um, would this be, this would be your own working group meeting? Would you yes. Need that? You wouldn't need me at that meeting. No, no, Sandy, no. thank you though. Yeah, we would get back to you on any questions we had or any thoughts we had after we had that meeting. Right, so what, what um, yeah, so what I'm going to need um, from everybody, I guess, is just the comments, the the redlining or whatever, you know, um, and then I can put them in final. So even if they come from all, of it, even if I get one set from one person and another set from another person, it doesn't matter to me how I get all the comments. I can, I can piece it together. I want to make this as easy for you as possible. I don't, what I don't want to happen is I don't want the board to feel like you have to rewrite all the policies. I just want mm -hmm. your comments, suggestions, factual things that need to be changed, and we'll make those changes for you. I don't want you to write them. So, okay. Yeah, that's our job. Okay. So, I just want to, I don't want anybody to get carried away. <laughs> so, so Sandy, you don't mind accepting the red lines individually? I know the, I know oh. the personnel committee and the board will. Will will consult with each other among their their respective members. I don't, I don't mind at all. I don't okay. mind at all. I, okay. I, would, I just want comments, suggestions. You know, well, not, you know, I just want comments, factual things, and policy decisions. You know, but we want to write them. We don't want you to be writing the policies. And we have a certain writing style, and you don't want it written in all different. You know, if right. you notice, it's all written in the same style. So. Yep. You know, we want to make them good for you. So, so just give me your comments. That's all. You can either do it on the policies themselves, or you can do it in a memo and make comments. 
whatever is easier for you. Okay. You know, or if there's something that you want in here and say, gee, we have this policy. We like this. Can you put it in and just send us a copy of it? You know, you can okay. do that if you want. Does that sound good, Margaret? That sounds like a plan. Yeah. And I really don't want you guys to obsess on it and obsess right. You know, we'll do that. And don't forget that your labor attorney is going to review the final anyway. That's right. Yeah. Right. You're going to make one labor attorney very happy <laughs> when it's 99 pages. I think I know her. <laughs> With the 99 pages. The labor attorney is already looking at a new boat. So. <laughs> So we'll, we'll do that That's funny. Labor attorney has probably been doing that with our old policies. Right. <laughs> to, right. Yeah. Right. Read between the lines. Right. A lot. Of, a lot of towns really need to have their their policies updated. We're getting we get calls all the time, and you know, we can only do so many at a time. But mm. um, you well. Know. Well, thank you very much, Sandy, for that excellent presentation. And thank you for all the work you've done on our policies. We will take a look at them. We will get comments and suggestions, redlining back to you. And um, we will be discussing the policies amongst ourselves to make some, um, some thoughts, make sure they come out on the paper. Okay, I, I thank you very, very much. and. Um... I thank, thank you for your patience. I know it took us a long time. We just got so into the paying class and um, and I don't know, it just took away from time to do this and I apologize for the delay, but that's no, I think you're gonna end up with a very good product in the end. I think so too, thank you. Thank well, you. Okay, thank you. All any right, thank you, Sandy. Any other thoughts or any other items that we wanna discuss before we adjourn? I know you have FinCom tonight too. Oh, that's okay. I'm, I'm going back and forth. <laughs> it's all good. So um, Margaret, speaking of the paying class, when am I giving that presentation again to the employees? I know you told March me. March 4th. It's March oh. 4th, Sandy. Next okay, March, Thursday. Okay. I, I kept thinking it was the 10th. Okay, it's the 4th. All right, good. I got, it on my, I got it on my calendar. We're good. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to double check that. Um, and I, I will send you the PowerPoint in advance. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, all right. All right. I'll, I'll leave then. I'm sure you guys have other business to do. All right. Well, thank you, Sandy. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Okay. Bye, bye. Thank bye. you, Sandy. Bye. Thanks, Sandy. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. My only question, Margaret, is do we have any responses to the cemetery yet? No, no. Okay. I'm going to put it out there. I, and I, I think I've put it out there because I propose this to Barry. Um, I, I think, um, you know, if there was some way that the town, if, if we could uh, put someone under the, uh, under the operational jurisdiction of the highway department to maintain cemeteries, um, you know, in the policy direct under the policy direction of the cemetery commission, um, I just you know I've, I've been trying to analyze ways that um, you know we could achieve some cost savings in some areas and um, in order to in order to make this work. And so far, I haven't been able to come up with a um, a, uh, a solution that would break even. But I think operationally, it would probably benefit the town overall to be able to find a solution like that. That's that's what I've got right now. I know I'm going off, but no no response yet from Cemetery Commission. And I'm so, sorry, I I have that other document too from the other town that they did somewhat of what we're talking about, and I meant to share that with you, and I haven't. I will try to get it down to you. So five or six, or maybe even eight to ten years ago, um, FinCom tried to go down this path with cemetery and highway, and so from that point in time. One of the, the concerns, I think it happened when cemeteries began to buy their own equipment and store it at the places and like, why does cemetery need a lawnmower separate from the highway department having a lawnmower sort of thing. Um, and the concerns at the time uh, were a combination of that what makes for a good lawnmower, you know, for 
highway and public grounds is, is not necessarily the same as a, a cemetery where you have to be much more cognizant of gravestones and damage versus an open field. Um, and a great care that the cemetery commission had at the time of worried about that a uh, uh, someone who does not work directly for the highway, uh, work directly for the cemetery might not have as much care. There was definitely a paranoia of, uh, of damage to headstones and, and other plantings there. Um, that said, I, I think there might be a way to still accomplish those goals and make sure we have the proper respect and don't damage the stones and still find operational efficiencies. Yep. Um, uh, but I know that that at least was a big issue at the time. And I think mostly because we were looking at equipment, it, we didn't, and perhaps Incom doesn't have the authority to do what both the select board and, and personnel committee have the ability to do. Um, it, it didn't get pushed as hard as, as it can be pushed now. That's understood. It's very, um, very common. I think it, it enhances, um, you know, it, I think a lot of towns um, find it, uh, find that by, by putting it under the highway department or the DPW's jurisdiction, it enhances staffing capacity um, to be able to spread the staffing out over more areas. Um, and somehow they have found ways um, to maintain, you know, cemeteries, grounds, you name it, um, under their jurisdiction. So um, that's... Uh, those are my most of the towns I looked into, most of the towns I looked into, they do it that way. Um, highway does, Highway DPW does do the cemeteries. Um, and we also do have the different mowers now. They have it. So the town owns those ride-ons that are easier to, you know, to maneuver around the stones. Pardon me for just for one moment. Hi, all. <laughs> You, I don't hear you. Uh, oh, no. I know that I've also been part yeah. of, and I've not, we've not done it this time because it doesn't have it, but some, uh, some towns have volunteer groups that help do some, not the regular mowing, but, and clearly not the, the grave digging as a volunteer, but as a regular cemetery cleanup that, that takes care of a lot of stuff that does take a little bit of burden off of a highway department or, or other folks. Okay. Any other thoughts? So my thought is along with us going over this new 99 page document, <laughs> we should probably get that job description done, combine yep. those two and send the three to Margaret so she can look at them. Yep, yep and we then can do that. I think that has to get done. Okay. Because we can't, we can't keep going like this. Right. I, uh, so at the next, am I on, on your, <laughs> at the next <laughs> personnel committee meeting, um, would you also consider looking at, if if needed, would you also consider looking at that labor labor driver job description, uh, so that we could post that position accurately if um, if we have if we run into having to go to the lower graded position? Yes, um, I. I briefly looked at the one that you had said that um, Sandy had done for us as a draft. So that's the one we're looking to approve, Margaret. Is that what well, you? Yeah, I, I think it's it's definitely more applicable to the position on the class and comp plan than the one that existed in 2000. Okay. Okay. We'll go over those. All right. Um, of the yellow sections on the policy, although I have opinions on a lot of them, um, the sick time seems to be the one that I, I don't know what we currently have, but 150 days of sick time seemed excessive. And I know we don't pay it out on termination, but that means that someone really could be sick for like, and we could pay sick time for six and a half to seven months. Because while they're getting paid the sick time, they're still accruing more sick time. So that's an example of where we should be looking our, at our existing policies to see if we could salvage any portions of those, right? Rather than pick up all the new the new stuff. Right. So, right. Right and now just we, oh, yeah, 
So that new mass paid family medical leave law, Scott, I know you've got it too. That's, mm -hmm. that's 20 weeks. Right. So it's like, and then get getting, I, so I, I hear and I feel your pain because right now we're coming to grips with people who had babies in 2020, they got their maternity leave then, but now as of January 1st, 2021, they get an additional 12 weeks of bonding. So for, I know I'm looking at Chris's face. I know it's it's so we're trying to come to grips with employees who were out last year for, for three to four months on maternity leave. Now they come back to work and as of January 1st, they can pick any time they want within a year from having that baby. This is new Massachusetts law to take 12 years, 12 weeks of bonding. And so can their, and that's the Massachusetts law, and so can the spouse. So right now, it, family medical leave you used to be able to divide it up. So if we had a a a a person in their spouse both working for the same employer, you could divide it up. So six weeks and six weeks, or twelve. You know, no, this one's twelve weeks and twelve weeks. And that's just for bonding time. If they get that's sick in there, bonding time. they, they could do another 20 weeks of sick time. And we, we are already seeing employees who like have a child and take the maternity leave and then take the bonding leave. And then suddenly miraculously have like a COVID scare and they want to take yep. 20 weeks out on top of that. And, right, and, right. Uh, yeah, uh, we're trying to. And, and some of it is since much of it is paid for by the fund they're paying into and, and the state and not us, but there's scheduling issues which go on when this happens. And Right, and it's it's just um, trying to find people to work has been a, a difficult feat. So anyway, so that I, I will look closely at what we currently have in our policies and then what the new ones say. So should, right. should the um, select board uh, wait until personnel has gone through them, or should we? No, <laughs> no, right. We, we'd no, love to hear your thoughts. We would. We, you know, we'd All love right. to hear your thoughts because you know we've had thoughts too. Where we've had personnel committee meetings when we started going through these a couple of years ago, we never quite got there with them, and um, so we'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay. All okay, right. So you, you all have access to the existing yep. personnel policies yep. and Sandy's. So, okay. Okay, great. All right. Um, okay. And I'm gonna make a motion to adjourn so great Margaret can get to her next meeting because oh, she looks so excited. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, oh, it's okay. It's good. Okay. I'll second that motion. Any discussion? No discussion. All those in favor? Aye. Sue, aye. Okay. Will it join? Tom's the muted. Meeting?